Uh, and you have a, a new book release that's uh, very uh, similar. Coming up in August, yeah. Yeah, August. And this is the one where I'm murdered. Uh, yeah, and, and Mike Height. And Mike Height. The difference between me, Bill, and Height is I didn't have to pay anything to get killed in your book. Well, and, and Height is actually a good guy, unlike... <laughs> <laughs> the Stubblefield clan. Yeah, the Stubblefield crime family. Now, yeah. why is that? How did you make that determination? It just fell out that way. Editorial decisions. <laughs> These things happen, though. Now, okay, I know that I'm a bad guy. Height was a good guy. How about Rob? Uh, he killed his wife. That's not a nice guy. That's not a nice guy. Yeah. Of course, we never met her, so, you know, but no. No, he's a bad guy. Yeah. He's a bad guy. You had me kill my wife? Yeah. That was not very nice for you, Rob. Well, that we know I, that I, happened in your past. That, that, that puts a whole to that. That whole puts a whole different outlook. Well, that's why uh, your impression you're, of you, Dennis. You wouldn't have consented to that, right? I wouldn't consent to that. I, it's more likely that my wife would have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Parker Darlington tells us that 74 years ago today, Willie Mays made his professional debut, and at the time he was with the uh, Trenton Giants. And they played the Hagerstown Braves at Municipal Stadium in Hagerstown, the old Municipal Stadium. That was 74 years ago today. Recently passed Willie Mays, making his professional baseball debut. And uh, that's a pretty cool little piece of information. Parker, thank you. Our guest in this segment is City Councilman Dennis Etherington. Dennis, good morning to you. Good morning, uh, John and Admiral. <laughs> Bill. And congratulations to you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, let, let's talk about your election victory there, Dennis. Uh, your thoughts as to the reasons why the voters returned you to office? Um, well, I'm a likable guy. <laughs> <laughs> Cuddly. Now, I, I think that um, I taught for 41 years in the county. Um, and... During my time at South Middle School, I was there for 29 years, um, I, a lot of kids went through my, my classes. And um, I like to think that they liked me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, of course, while I was at South, I coached football and baseball across the street at Martinsburg High School. And uh, we had some fun times there, too. Now, all those kids are adults now, uh, some of whom – live in Ward 1, and they know me and my association with them, it, it, I think, led to um, or helped to lead to my re-election. And, and I've been, this was my fifth uh, election election that I went through, um, and uh, I was fortunate, enough, of course, to, to be successful in all of them. Were you appointed the first time, or did you run the first time? I was appointed, uh, Sherry Persaud was the uh, council person for Ward 1. And Sherry apparently took another job, I think it was with a magistrate. She was, Joanne, uh, over there. Yes, yes. yes. And um, uh, the state ruled that there was a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So she had to get off the council, and uh, the uh, council at that time asked for uh, letters of interest from folks that um, – were interested in becoming a councilman, and uh, I've told you this story before. Um, Mark Baldwin was city manager, and he was down at our house, and, and I said, what do you have to know or do to be on council? Uh, I had a little bit of interest in it because my father-in-law um, was the editor of the journal, and he always covered city council, so I would hear him talking or he would talk to me about different situations. And um, so um, I wrote a letter of interest, and um, the council at that time chose me over two other people that had written letters of interest. Um, and I, I, I recall uh, Betty Gano was on council at that time, and uh, maybe a month or two later, Betty told me that um, some of the other council people, when she were talking, and they determined that um, if Dennis Etherington was good enough for Buck Martin to let him marry his daughter, <laughs> that he has to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I like that. That's a good story. So yeah. my father-in-law comes through again for me. Nicely done. Yeah, well played. Uh, your thoughts on voter turnout in the city of Martinsburg and what could be done to help it improve? Well, 
the city turnout has, since I've been on there, has always been low. Right. Um, but it was especially low this time. And I've thought about this. I, I listened to you all talking to um, Heidi Crawford mm -hmm. uh, yes. last week, and I thought about it. And I think folks are either satisfied, happy with the council that we have now, and they were willing to go along with what was there, um, or, and this is not good to say, but some of them simply don't care. And, and that's why they're not showing up. Can anything be done to change that? Well, uh, and I'm, I'm not a proponent of this um, because I like to stay with the, the charter of the city. Mm -hmm. um, but there's talk, and you guys have heard it, um, about setting it up to go with the primary. Um, I'm not a big proponent of, of change, particularly with the charter, um, I, but I could understand maybe getting a better turnout um, because there's other elections involved at that time as well. But sometimes I think we'd be listed further down on the ballot and people just start pecking names without really putting any thought to it. So ultimately, would you be in favor of moving the election to the county's primary, state's primary day? I, I, would, I think I would have to be convinced a little bit more. All right. Bill? Yeah, I, this 6.4 percent of turnout is a number it's hard to walk yourself around. I agree. And, and, and it could be voter apathy. It could be the fact that everybody, uh, at least 6.4 percent, are pleased with incumbents. Uh, but if I was a city council, I'd be looking for ways to improve that turnout. And, and you don't lose a lot by uh, by moving up the, uh, uh, the election day to that other primary. And I understand yeah. that. I do. Let me go back. A couple points you made I found of interest. One, you said you felt that the fact you taught so many years uh, at Martinsburg High uh, had a bearing on, the, on your election. Elaine Malk used to say the same thing, and I think there's a lot of credit to that. And I'm still convinced if the election was in Hedgesville uh, because of Elaine's contact, she would be, she'd be elected. Now, being outside of Hedgesville, other things came into factor. But I do believe the fact that you were influenced and so well known by so many people through the school system did have a bearing. So I like to think so, to yeah, be honest I with you. So. Yeah. You know, as far I, I would get back to this election thing, people get the, the government that they're interested in. Right? right. And the idea of engineering elections to get more or fewer voters, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, people who are interested are going to turn out on Election Day when the Election Day happens. Uh, and I'll ask you this as a city councilman and not necessarily in your ward, just in general. Uh, how does a city councilman, the, whoever the city council person, affect the day to day life of a city resident? I mean, what? Why does it matter to the average citizen who sits in the council seat or doesn't? Well, my thought on that is people go downtown to shop, and the city council uh, controls a lot of the things that happens in downtown. And, um, well, the, the parking situation, you know, some people want parking garage, um, I think, as far as parking garage is concerned, there was a study done before I was on the council that said we didn't need a parking garage. Before we jump into that, I think another study needs to be done. I don't think we can just go off and say we're going to build a parking garage. Studies need to be done. So I have a theory that people who are discontented vote. People who are contented tend not to. In, in local elections. That's just my theory. I have absolutely no data to back that up. Yeah, you can flip it the other way, John. There needs to be, and I, and I agree with that, but I think there needs to be inducements, if there can be inducements, to encourage a larger yeah, turnout. I, I'm not opposed to that, but yeah. it's... 
Uh, going back to the parking garage, I thought there had been studies. Weren't there studies yeah. done by? Uh, yeah, but that was done before I was on the council. But uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. But but what I'm saying is, before we jump into that, another study needs to be take place. So the study was is 20 years old or older. Oh, uh, at least um, with this election. When this one runs out, I will have been on the council for 20 years. Okay. And this was before okay. I was on council. Okay. Dennis, <clears throat> your opponent, uh, Chris Amoroso, uh, it seemed to be a fairly quiet election. We didn't get the chance to interview Chris. He, I know he does a lot of sports physicals. When I was communicating with him, he said he was busy sun up to sun down with those, so he never got a chance to do an interview. Did you get a chance to talk with him or meet with him in any way? Not really. I And I, I've never met him. I do know that he is the husband of Dr. Funk. And Dr. Funk is actually my wife's uh, primary care physician. And um, he is the office manager for her practice. That's basically all I know. Mm -hmm. Well, you won by 10 plus percentage points, which was the biggest margin of victory in any of the contested seats. So that's pretty nice endorsement. Okay, but now let's realize what that is okay ten percent okay because down the we election night we were down in our our, our driveway <clears throat> excuse me and uh mark was down there mm -hmm. and he said mark baldwin yeah i'm sorry and um he said well you're ahead 55 percentage points over uh, maury's who has i think 44 at that time and i said mark don't tell me percentages Give me numbers. And in all actuality, at the end of the night, I had 118 votes, and Mr. Morris had 96, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's not a big difference. So the percentages don't mean a whole lot to me. Did certain sections, uh, did various wards have a larger turnout than others? They did, but as far as my ward... Um, I don't know the numbers. Uh, the and I asked Gina, Gina Long. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, I asked Gina to give me those numbers, yeah. but she didn't have them at the time. But she said you'd get them for me. That would be a very interesting number, as opposed to group and everything six point four, but implies that your award may have had it even lower than six point four. Well, and that's funny because in the past the wards in the west end of the city usually have a bigger turnout. Yes. Um, uh, Ken Collison's ward um, three and my ward one usually has the bigger turnout. Now, the last election, not, not this one that we just went through, um, my opponent actually got more votes in the... Uh, precinct i can't remember the number of it but the one that's out at orchard view he got more votes in that uh precinct and that is uh the gallery primarily and martinsburg station i got more votes um in the quote actual city boundaries mm -hmm. um because that that area that precinct is yeah, it, it's not actually sort of connected to the city per se. Dennis, going into the election and coming out of the election, were there any real hot button issues that got your attention? I don't. I don't believe so. I mean, uh, I am who I am, and you either like me or you don't like me. No, I want to say hot button. <laughs> I was talking about issues for not toward uh, you, but toward the uh, uh, city as a whole. I. I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. By the way, uh, I, apologies, I mispronounced Chris's last name. I think I added another syllable to him called him Amoroso. It's Amores, as you said, yeah. uh -huh. Dennis. Uh, everybody who ran was reelected. Uh, there was one effectively uh, open seat because Corey Four. Rubin wasn't returning mm -hmm. and, and Heidi Crawford uh, won that seat. So everybody who is an incumbent returned to office. That includes the mayor, right. uh, Kevin Knowles. Uh -huh. uh, how how was your relationship with the mayor now, Kevin? Uh, I mean, uh, with Kevin, I, I should yeah. say, Dennis. I think it's fine. I, I think Kevin 
in all actuality, is doing a good job. I do. I mean, he's out. Um, he attends uh, uh, openings. Um, he he addresses the uh, uh, the Rotary and Chamber of Commerce and whatnot. I think he's doing a good job. I really do. Um, as far our personalities aren't the same, and and that's basically why um, that right, if you want to call it a rumor, got started. But, I mean, he and I are both baseball people. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so we get along. What uh, rumor got started? That he and I didn't get along. Uh. But uh, no. All right, let's shift to look forward, okay? 2028, uh -huh. Martinsburg, if you, everything goes as, as you all like it to do, you've got this continuation of power. How does 2028 Martinsburg look different than 2024 Martinsburg? I like to think that uh, Queen Street is more vibrant. I like to think that, What does that mean? Uh, businesses. Uh, I like to think that the, the, some of the shops that are empty right now are, are open. How are we bringing them in? How are we bringing that business in? Well, I, I, you know, I think Main Street Martinsburg attracts a lot of people. That, that, that's a, a, a good organization. And, and they take a lot off of our plate as far as the council is concerned. I mean, the activities that they have downtown that attract people in the town, um, it takes a lot off of our plate. We don't have to invest a lot of time or effort um, to get people downtown since they're doing that. Would a B&O tax cut help attract more business to the city? Uh, Queen Street specifically? Well, I ask you, I, here's why I ask, because a vibrant restaurant scene is the key to any downtown area. Residents bring a vibrant restaurant scene, and you're about to get that and then some with the new development that's going in and as they start to, to lease apartments. However, a restaurant is a historically low-margin business, and the first year of a restaurant's existence is critical. If you're paying tax on the revenue you take in that isn't profit, that is difficult for a low revenue business to have to deal with. I believe, Rob, and it's been a long time since this subject has come up, but I believe that new businesses actually get a break, um, and I can't remember the actual figures, but, but like the first year, mm -hmm. they may not, I have to uh, pay the pay, full. Pay the right. full. I think I believe you're right. I and, think so and then too. It, yeah. it increases. It gives them an opportunity to ramp up. Yeah, and um, you got to keep in mind the B and O tax is a big part of our income, the city's income. Um, I, I want to think uh, it's either thirty eight or forty percent mm -hmm. uh, of our budget, and we need that. And and until Charleston, the legislature, comes up with another way for us to get that money, get that 30 or 40 percent, until they come up with another way, we're going to have to have a B&O &O tax. I'm not saying eliminate it, but is it possible to scale it back more? I don't have an answer for you there. But uh, I think that would be a question for um, – Maybe Andy, uh, mm -hmm. Blake, the city manager, or possibly Mark Spickler. For the last several years, it's my understanding, Martinsburg has been running in the black with the budget. So uh, so you have a surplus over what you spend. Is that still the case? And if so, how much is it? I, I don't know the, the amount, but we are fiscally sound. Mm -hmm. And I contribute that to Mark Spickler. He, he's the finance director, and Mark's good. He's real good. That's good stuff. So uh, in, in regards to uh, John's question about 2028, uh, what do you project with the residents that are coming in with the new apartments that will be there and increasing population? Uh, what do you think that could bring business-wise to that Queen Street corridor? And are you hearing anything about it now? I know Shane Farthing's a big part of trying to attract those businesses. Um, 
the best way I can answer that is I know um, Jamie, um, dang, well, I can't see if it's his last name, the, the, the guy that has the, or Stonebreaker, uh, who has um, Stonies, mm-hmm. okay? He and another fella, and it might be the guy that has the garages, the garage on. on Diego Lasada. Yes. Um, I believe, well, I know they're in the process of, of opening a. Uh, Somebody's a, opening up a martini bar. Martini bar. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't I've, remember if it I've was been martini. I've reached out to. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if it was martini or margarita bar, but it's a martini bar. Yeah. And we just, uh, the last council meeting, we just uh, approved that. Mm-hmm. So That's one. That's a start. Well, yeah, right. that's a, that's a beginning, and who knows what. But that's the Mar- it's it's interesting that that's the Martin Street corridor that's that's developing, which is Martinis on Martin Street. But it it almost couldn't be farther from the, um, the, the Queen and King. Well, yeah, the the the, um, the so- interwoven complex. Yeah, I right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a long way to walk past a lot of undeveloped <laughs> with Martini. <laughs> No, past a lot of undeveloped potential. Well, let's hope. Space. Let's hope that um, let's hope that the garage on King Street attracts those folks from the interwoven, and if new businesses yeah. open as you get closer to the square, possibly that will attract people down that way. And of course, I, I like what. Uh, Six on the square it used to be Fridays at five. Mm-hmm. Um, six on the square attracts people, and so maybe those people who are the interwoven will be attracted to the square that way. And it's within walking distance, mm-hmm. not for me. <laughs> but Dennis, we were talking about Kevin Nold a few minutes ago. I think one of Kevin's strengths is he's a good ambassador. You also have uh, Robbie Blair with Main Street Martinsburg. My sense is that. Martinsburg today has a lot of good vibes coming out. From I agree. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, I, it's growing, and and I think the reason that Martinsburg is growing is because the county as a whole is growing as well. Yeah. Oh, there's no questioning yeah. about that. Or you can. But the county has been growing for several yeah. years. I don't think the vibe around Martinsburg has has been going back quite as long as the growth of the county. That's true. That's yeah. true. Dennis, one minute left. Your chance to give a message, a thank you or whatever, to the voters in the city of Martinsburg. Well, I, I would like to thank uh, all those people that voted for me. And, I, and actually, I'd like to thank the people that voted for uh, Mr. Morris as well. I mean, because they came out and voted. Yeah, and that's voted. what we were discussing. You know, we got to get people out to vote. And um, I'm appreciative of those who voted for me, but I also appreciate the folks that came out and just voted, not only in my ward, but those that showed up in the city. You uh, looking at another term after this one as a potential? That's up in the air. I'm 73 now, four years. I'll be 77. Uh, Young President 73. I I am not Joe Biden. I am not (laughs) Donald Trump. And... Bless his soul. I am not George Karras. <laughs> How's George doing? You know, Mark Baldwin uh, visited him this week, and uh, he was able to to uh, communicate with Mark and whatnot. I, I, I think he's a wonderful man. Absolutely, absolutely. wonderful. Uh, he. This is another story, real quick. I've always been told, and Mr. Karras is one person who told me this. My father-in-law was a staunch Republican, and George Karras told me that Mr. Martin told him that George Karras is the only Democrat that Mr. Martin ever voted for. There you go. I've heard that story. <laughs> hey, we are, we're back with more after these.